What is up, everybody? Jay Nell here with my recap of the Manny Pacquiao versus Brandon Rios fight. Just want to give my little two cents in real quick. Um, if you don't already know, Pacquiao won decisively. Even he said himself he wanted to show that he could still compete with the highest level of competitors. And I think he proved that. He won pretty much every single round. You may want to give, you could give one to Brandon. There was one round where he actually was able to hit Pacquiao. But other than that, he just really couldn't hit him. I think he was faster than he expected. I think he hit harder than he expected. He never know until you get in there with the actual guy. And so I just think he got beat by the, the better man. So of course Mayweather talks coming back up here. I think Pacquiao's probably going to have to get a belt of some sort in order for Mayweather to entertain that fight. But anyway, <laughs> some interesting things I found. Uh, I've been watching a lot more MMA lately just because there just seems to be a lot more of it. Not just with the UFC, but with uh, Bellator, World Series Fighting, Kickboxing, Invicta. There's just a lot of MMA and it's exciting. Um, I also want to talk about bloodlust because I found myself with a little case of bloodlust, and I was surprised. I didn't expect this. Normally when I watch boxing fights, it's in a big atmosphere, party of some sort. People are talking throughout the entire undercards. You're going on beer runs and whatever. So you don't really see, watch the undercards. This time I watched it with like two other people. I watched the entire event, and um, I found myself craving some blood, man. And it, it wasn't cream. It wasn't the bloodlust. It was the fact that so many fights were stopped. Um, there was a feather, a flyweight fight, six rounder. Uh, the, this this whole event took place in China. It was a Chinese fighter, totally one, whooping his dudes behind. And uh, throughout the, I mean, from the third round on, only six rounds, the commentators, Roy Jones Jr. and the other two, were like, his corner should throw in the towel. There's no way he could win this fight. His corner should throw in the towel, throw in the towel, throw in the towel. They didn't. But I was just like, throw in the towel. You don't see that often in MMA. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen it. I'm sure it's happened, but I've never seen a corner throw in a towel before. So I was just like, throw in a towel? No, you tough that out. He could get a knockout here. Like, tough that out. Rawr, warrior. I just was like, rawr. <laughs> then there was a heavyweight fight after three rounds. Only six round fight. After three rounds, the heavyweight contender, who was winning at that point, I guess he just had enough, and he said, I'm done. He went back to his corner and he quit. And the fight was over. Now, I do, on a serious note, I believe there was a heavyweight fighter who just passed away recently. So that could have been on his mind. And I know you have to protect your fighters. In the Coleman event, the featherweight fight, um, this was a 12-rounder. The corner ended up throwing in the towel. This guy was losing pretty much every round. The Australian cat was beating him up. And on this one, I had to like calm myself down because Roy Jones put a, brought up a great point. This is 36 minutes. This guy didn't, the Australian who won, he didn't have the punching power to knock him out or end the fight. However, he was repeatedly hitting him in the head. Can we say CTE? You know? So yes. I was like, okay, yes. In that case, they threw in the towel, I think, somewhere around the 10th, 11th round. And for that fight, I was like, okay, I understand. But I just found myself craving like that. You know, in MMA, you have submissions. You have kicks and elbows. Strikes like that can end the fight in one blow. So you don't, you would never dream of throwing in the towel. Say, I've seen Big Noguera get his behind whooped often for the whole fight and then submit the guy in the last round. So you don't throw in the towel. Same thing with, again, head kicks, John Jones' elbows. You don't throw in the towel because those are one strike fight enders right there. So I just found myself <laughs> craving a little blood. I was like, no, stay in there and fight. Rawr! It was, uh, I had to calm myself down there. <laughs> so I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Uh, boxing is still makes way more money than MMA does. The fighters make way more money than the MMA fighters do. So it's not going away. Boxing is not going away. But I just wanted your thoughts on what it can do to compete with the fastest rising sport in America. MMA is poaching boxing fans. And the fans are coming back. You get a lot more. It really feeds that bloodlust. Plus they have more tools with the submissions and the elbows and the knees and kicks. So just throw some thoughts on what box can do, maybe promote more stars, just uh, what, it, what it can do to compete. Also, do you think this Pacquiao Mayweather fight is ever going to happen? Personally, I, I don't think, I said it before, I don't think so. I still don't really think so. If in order for Mayweather to entertain it, like I said before, I think Pacquiao would have to win a belt, probably win a few more fights. And you know, they were talking $75 million a piece before and they couldn't get it done. 
So I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. I could be wrong. I want your thoughts on uh, do you think the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight will ever happen? What will it take to happen? And um, what are your thoughts on boxing versus MMA? Can they compete? I don't think either one of them are going anywhere. But just your thoughts on, on everything I just said. <laughs> so all right then. Take care and goodbye.